So now we have, we'll just quickly discuss about sender display name. So all of us get emails from different names, different and what you can see on the left-hand side, right? Usually it can be just the company name. Now, should you send it from Zomato? Should you send it from Zomato India? Should you send it from the name Dipinder Goyal? What should you send it from is a decision we should take when we first start email campaign. Now, I have just mentioned your options that you all can choose from if you all are setting this up or if you already are in an environment where you're seeing it, if you can look at alternatives because a lot of times the percentage of people who open your emailer depends on who it comes from. So if it comes saying CEO of Airtel, right, I may have a higher probability of clicking on it than if it just says Airtel. So you either have an option of having the individual's name. So for example, Kunal Shah, right? So you can either do a Kunal Shah or you can do company name, you know, Cred, or you can do Kunal from Cred, or you can do saying, you know, your uh, well wishers from Cred. And exclusivity is if they have a exclusive thing, right? Like how in Amazon, you have Amazon Prime. So you have all of these different options if you want to take up different sender display names. Now, remember one thing that do not have an individual's name. If you do not, if the person's not well known, see not all company CEO are famous, right? The CEO wants to believe they are famous. We want them to feel nice about it. But what happens is a lot of times and what you can see here now, Desera Pereira. Now, do you know who is Desera Pereira? No. Do I know who is Desera Pereira? No. I'm getting emails from her and this Mahesh Bangera from a long time. I don't even know who they are. What is the use of sending me an email or from someone whom I don't know, right? It has higher probability of me putting it in spam. Now, it's a possibility that Desera and Mahesh are CEOs of their company. It's a huge possibility, right? Otherwise, why will they have their name? But I personally, if I don't know, then this does not make any sense to me. So, do not and avoid, even if you're you know, boss forces you. Just say it very nicely that I'm not sure that this is going to have a greater impact in the number of open rates that we have. And hence, I would suggest that we stick with the company name itself. And this is something, and I had created this workflow at uh, Aditya Birla when I was setting up email campaigns. And Aditya Birla, in one year, I had sent out some 560 plus emailers. And it was very important there that we created workflows because imagine manually if you have to do that many emailers, right? And we, th these are different businesses and different products and all of that. But to keep a track of these emailers are very uh, difficult. So what we did is rather than doing it as we go, rather than getting up today and saying, Chalo, let's send an email, we created a workflow. Okay? And these can be very complicated workflows. These can be very simple workflows. This was a simple workflow we had done. What we had said is we'll create three different email designs. Okay? And in these three different email designs, we would have two subject lines. So there, were an, there was an option of three different email designs and two subject line options. We had decided, and like because of the entire thing that happened with the you know, blacklist of our domain, we said we will send to 50,000 customers five times a week, which means that you will be able to, in one week, reach out to 2.5 lakh people. We did not want to push it and send everyone together. Least of all, the entire thing happens again of being blacklisted. So we only decided 50,000 customers a day, five times a week. So 2.5 lakh people in a week will be getting the emailer. Now, once you did this, we said that first we would send emailer design one with subject line one to all of those 2.5 lakh customers in five days. Now, out of those, whoever clicked and opened on the emailer, whoever opened the emailer and clicked and went to the website, we would remove them from future email campaigns because they've already reacted, right? So if I send you an email which says buy biryani from Zomato, and if you buy the biryani, I cannot again send you an email saying buy biryani, right? It's over. I mean, you've already made the purchase. So what I'll do, I'll remove you from the list of future messaging that I sent out. Now, after I send you the biryani email, imagine you did not, you opened it, but you did not click on it. What does that mean? Maybe you don't like biryani. Maybe you didn't feel like eating biryani that day. So what I will do is the next day, I will send you another emailer, right? So the first day I sent you the biryani emailer with a subject line that says, get 50% or 20% off. The second day, because I realized you did not like the biryani, I will send you saying, have Chinese, right? At 20% discount. The emailer, now, 
subject line will stay get you know have your lunch at 20% discount we'll keep the same subject line because the subject line worked the last time right when you saw the last subject line you opened it you just didn't like the biryani so you didn't go ahead with it so we'll keep the subject line the same but you will send them a emailer which talks about chinese this time so the email changes now in that emailer if also if the customer did not open the emailer at all right imagine the person did not open the biryani emailer and did not open the chinese emailer it means that the person didn't like the subject line now there's a rule we have to remember here that if a person opens the email that means the subject line was successful if the person opens the email and clicks on it that means both the subject line and the messaging was perfect if the person opens the email and does not click on it that means subject line was good but the body copy was not good right because you looked at what you saw in the email and you said yaar mujhe nahi kharidna so there are these simple and this is a rule across any industry any emailer that you send that open means that you like the subject line if you clicked on it it means that you like the body copy so if the person did not open the email up both times what has gone wrong the subject line has gone wrong because a person did not like the subject line so i know now that get 20% off as a subject line is not working on this customer so what do i do i will say buy one get one free my subject line will change to that niche andar i will again send the biryani wala only because a person is not even opened and seen the biryani right but i will change the subject line so that way you create combinations you will create these emails and you will send out different emails now this if a person opens right does not click and then the next time also opens like i do that for zomato i like zomato emailers they look nice i don't buy from them so i keep sending them and i keep getting new new emailers right so i keep getting you know one day i'll get pastry one day i'll get chinese i'll keep getting different ones because zomato has seen that she's clicking she's opening but she's not actually purchasing so then i keep getting all of these different emails and these are strategies that the company set now when you have to and we were talking about the sender name right try to stick to a sender name see if if all of these brands start sending you with different names will you remember what they are you will not right so if i send you saying you know hdfc and then i say hdfc prime and then i say hdfc life and then i say hdfc bank you will keep getting confused in your head they are all different brands so you have to stick to what you know for each of these create a sender name and stick to that so people have a association with it the second one is spam bots now i will take you through something now i don't know if you all have heard of hubspot okay yeah. hubspot is supposed to be it's supposed to be a software okay i should go here hubspot has a list of spam bots right and it has been updated now in 2021 now if you go this go here you will get all of these words that if you use in the subject line will trigger your email to spam now why is it important to know there are times when you will send out an email and that entire email bunch if you send it out to say you know two lakh people or all two lakh people it will go into spam and that is not because people have put you in spam that is because the email platform whether it's google yahoo outlook whoever it is they have put you in spam because they have a spam list so if you see and i will just quickly go down all of these words right if you use in a subject line for this particular section right if it's e-commerce e-commerce is flipkart amazon all of these guys right if you use the word order status and in the order status under if you have an email promotional emailer or if it says order and you would have seen these emails right it says it just says order status and if you click on it it opens and it says buy now to get your order delivered right so all of these are considered to be spam the other things that we have to remember is these kind of words on dollars on extra cash on per week all of these in the subject line also put you in spam now we are finance right i mean i come under finance so we usually look at this so we avoid these words that you can see collect compare credit discount we actually avoid these words in our email subject line 
because if you do this, it will 100% put you in the spam list, okay? So just type HubSpot spam words and you will reach this uh, list. So you can go through it in case you all are sending out email campaigns. Now, responsiveness to mobile because, and most of us read our emails on mobile itself, right? 85% right now is the current number of people on an average who access anything on their mobile, whether it's ad, whether it's Facebook. Facebook is still 92% access it through mobile, but social media in general, all of these are usually checked on the phone itself. There are certain emailers, which when you open in, an, in a phone, it does not, especially in iPhone, you can always remember this when you're testing, test an iPhone. iPhone is the most tricky out of them. Android is all easy. But iPhone now keeps changing their, you know, resolutions and all with every device that it gets in. So every time we create a template for iPhone, they create something new and then again, the email does not work properly. So check if the email is opening up fine. The responsiveness is when one thing comes below the other. The email shouldn't get small, right? Now, if this is an email, imagine it's this, right? The entire email should not come on your mobile like this. The email should come in a way where this goes here, this goes here, and the entire thing becomes shotu, right? How you see a website. Now, when I do this, see how it's become responsive. The image has come here, right? And everything has come in this way. This is what responsiveness is. It cannot be that the entire page, you know, becomes like this. This cannot be responsive. So you have to check this on all phones. The other thing that you have to remember is black theme. Okay. So I will just quickly show. So on all our phones, right, uh, we have an option to go and change the display into something that we call as a dark theme. Now, now this is how the dark theme looks, right? Now, what happens in the dark theme, and I don't know if I can open this. Before. It looks like this, right? Now, what happens is in a dark theme, the background itself becomes full black, right? Now, when you have, I don't know if I'll get a picture of that. I don't know if we get examples. Huh. Let me just maybe show you this. Now you're seeing what's happening here, right? The entire thing, because it's become black. Because the entire thing has become black, you're seeing how the images are looking. See, this is a logo, right? Because what happens is when a designer makes it, because they usually make it for white theme, huh? the image logo that they pick up has a background of white because they don't have to think about it. When you are doing a black theme, you have to make sure that the logo used or the images used is going to look okay on a dark theme. The other thing to remember that happens okay, on dark theme, and this is a big, big issue that happens, is imagine in a white email, what is the color of the text that you will have? It will be black, right? Imagine on a dark theme, if this shows up with a black background, the black text shows with black background, you will not be able to see the text. So you'll actually have an email where you can't see the text because it's in black and the background becomes black. So it does not give it a you know background or anything. So what we do in a dark theme is we create, and I will just show you quickly, we create a white ecosystem around it. So this entire thing, Right. If you have, if you have this as a logo, right, and then here you have an image. I'm just doing a random thing, right, and here you have text. What we do is this entire thing that you see. I don't know if I can color this entire thing. We color because in an HTML usually you don't put a background because it was white theme you didn't have to put a background so today what we do is if the email and here if you have saying subject line and all right when it opens up this entire thing will have a background and on top of this you're writing what you want so then how your email exactly is created here is how it will be seen to the customer the black theme will not impact this so the black color that you see will be here will be here, but this email will stay as it is. 
So always remember to do this check when you're doing your email testing. Because what happens is, if I have a white team, and this mistake I I personally made. Okay, we used to send out dark team had just come in. I mean, dark team now has been there for one and a half years. But when we were do, when I was doing a campaign one and a half years back, that that time dark team had just come in, and we never realized also that these you know the team had changed. I and we used to keep sending out these emailers, and one day I just for time pass purposes I went and I changed my team to black. And then I when I used to approve you know these test emailers, one day I got this test emailer and I said my goodness it is looking like this. So I went and googled saying ki what is this dark team, and I so got that it had come out maybe a month or more before. And I went through the old emails that we sent, and कुछ भी नहीं दिख रहा था वो email में because our text was black. So then, that is how I came to know that there was a black team issue also happening. Today, black team is more common, so we have to make sure that it's made for black team. Tender repetition score is what I told you. If you start being put in spam too many times, every time that you put in spam, you will lose points from the sender repetition score. Sender repetition score is also out of hundred. It is something you can check. So if you go to one of these softwares from where you send out emailers, right? If you're using a Netcore or a Mailchimp or something. You will be able to check your sender repetitions for if you are sending out emails for a business. Image caption, and I tell you why this is important. When we have a lot of times, I don't know if you have seen this. Imagine you are traveling in the train, okay? And because you are traveling in the train, your network is bad. You get an email where this. Imagine this is an image. We'll have this. This image doesn't load. And you have this in a cross format, right? And there's no image inside. Now, when this happens, you cannot. When you see and then there is text and all, right? So here there is your normal text written, which is all okay. But here you cannot see anything. Now, if I caption an image, what happens is, if I caption an image, even though there's no image that is loading because of my network issue, I will be able to see that what is this image supposed to be. Or if this was, say, like me, uh, nail paint, nail polish, nail paint. If I write, if I caption the image, and this is done at the HTML level, okay. If the image does not load, you allow the entire thing to be named, so at least people know what was supposed to be shown. The other thing you have to remember is all emailers have to be uploaded on your server, and there has to be an option which says "Open in browser." This is important because a lot of times emails are not open in a proper way in their phone. People should have an option to click on this, and in Chrome or Internet Outlook, the email should open up as it is. All of these things, like I said, just ask your, uh, you know. Person whom you're managing it with, I will just mention say browser option. So you can just go through this and make sure that you covered all of these points. Okay. Now after this, you have call to action. So make sure your call to action. If a call to action says buy online, you have to have an option to buy online. You it can't say that you know you have to call a WhatsApp number or something. Buy online means literally buying the entire thing in a online journey. The other thing to remember is when you are sending out emailers, test at different times. See, people open emails at different times. However, there is a pattern you can see for your customers. So, if you send out, if you have five lakh customers, and if you send out at eleven a.m. versus two a.m. versus five a.m. nine a.m., you will see that there is a particular time which consistently shows a better open rate. That is important, and that you have to figure that out. So, you have to do a testing across all different time slots that are. Available. Any questions, guys, on any of this?